Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to be having a fun idea conversation and we're going to be talking about industrial IoT and what does that mean for industry. So helping us with this conversation is Amos Purdy who works for Global Process Automation as a lead systems engineer. So welcome Amos. Thanks. I hope you're doing well today man. Yeah yeah sun's shining. Well good the sun is shining here also so I mean this is this is a buzzword. It is what it is, right? People hear of yeah. industrial IoT or IIoT, which I can't say without stuttering a lot, so I won't say that a lot this episode to save our listeners from like, who is this idiot? But anyway, so you know, what's your take on this? Well, I would say because it's a buzzword, you should definitely be using it because it's an easy way for money to get thrown at you, you know, in one of the best ways. <laughs> I'm just doing this. I'm just doing IIoT. Don't worry about it. And I've seen people do that, uh, but no, to kind of break it down, you know, Internet of Things, there's a lot of different definitions and stuff, but I, I think a really, you know, short definition is it's a device, small device usually, but it can have some sensors, have some capabilities, but you can easily disseminate them out and they all connect up to a centralized system. Now, how that changes to industrial IoT is obviously a little bit more of that industrial focus. Usually a lot more specialized equipment, so it lasts longer or it's it's not just sensors out there, it's, it's very specific sensors for a very specific reason. And really the biggest benefit of IIoT, just like IoT, IoT, you, you can tell if your bike got stolen and the kid down the street has it. Well, with like IIoT, You'll be able to tell if this machine has quality concerns or this one part that just went by, you know, has a little bit of wobble in it. So you can really expand that out where your IIoT can be vibration monitoring and get you ahead of huge maintenance related issues. So IIoT, I would say the biggest thing is better data, more specialized data, more focused data being able to quickly deploy those very specific for very specific purposes right absolutely i mean data it's all about data right i mean everybody wants it i mean the watch i'm wearing now just gives you so much data and feedback and it basically to improve from a personal standpoint i need to move more i need to stand more all these things the same type of technology is getting out into our plants and like you said they're telling us hey I have a problem over here. Come help me, you know, versus somebody actually having to physically say that. So it's really cool to see these types of devices and, and the expansion of IoT in the industrial environment. And one word I hear a lot of, Amos, man, maybe you can help me with, we hear connectivity. It's another buzzword that's out there. Can you walk us through how that, when you hear connectivity, how that's changed the game regarding the plant floor? Yeah, honestly, mobile technologies have been great, but even just Wi-Fi technologies, you know, not having to run cables every time to go get data, that's an infrastructure type connectivity that I think is just huge benefit. Getting a sensor up that can easily connect to Wi-Fi and you know you already have Wi-Fi there and all you have to do is go plug it in versus, okay, well, you got to get the pipe fitters and you got to get, you know, an outside contractor to run the wires and make sure we have a port available on a server or a switch. That's huge, you know, that connectivity, being able to quickly deploy it. But even on top of time frames, just the depth and the breadth of data you can get from these devices. You can get sub-second, you know, real-time information. And it's not just what the graph plot on the side of the thing, someone interpreted it and came up and, and told you about it, you know. You've already got some aggregation of data in there, but IOT gives you that just a huge amount of data that you really need to have to really do a lot of these more cool things, predictive maintenance and AI and machine learning and that kind of stuff. You just need to have all of that data, be able to get it from all the different sources that can give you good data and being able to connect to all those and quickly deploy those kind of 
things so you can get a lot of correlation and really define and refine your process is huge. No doubt. I mean, and you mentioned a few technologies there that I know have evolved through this, you know, the IOT onto the plant floor, such as remote monitoring, predictive maintenance, I mean, down to, to the way we're calculating OEE, right? So what are you seeing? How are these items changing as uh, this evolution continues? Yeah, everybody talks about predictive maintenance, definitely remote monitoring. I think that's biggest and first low-hanging fruit type improvements that you can see that plant back out on the back 40, you know. But the predictive maintenance, you know, we can really start to see AI and machine learning. Those are still pretty buzzwordy, but the technologies are are getting there where you will actually be able to use those and you will use those in everyday life. And so, you know, with IoT, the amount of data that they can get, the amount of good data that they can get and have real-time monitoring really allows you to respond a lot quicker and get ahead of a lot of problems. So, you know, you're talking about predictive maintenance. Well, what if you didn't even have to predict maintenance it just automatically triggered itself to go replace itself. You know, <laughs> like predictive maintenance could maybe be, you know, you never really have to worry about the plant going down because it already knows how to go fix itself. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you've kind of touched on something here. There is so much data available now, and sometimes it can be very difficult to aggregate that and, and pull it together to make those decisions moving forward. What are you seeing as some common inefficiencies that, that plant operations may have where if they could connect that data better and make better decisions, could take them to the next level? Anything there? I don't know if you've ever seen the data pyramid. I also call it the wisdom hierarchy. So at the very bottom, you've got data. And once you create a whole bunch of data, you can get information from it. Next layer up. And then... From your information, you can gain some knowledge, you know, ways to improve your process and try some things out. But it isn't until you try some things out that you really get to the top of that pyramid, wisdom. And that's when you really start to make breakthroughs and improvements and that kind of stuff. Well, at the very bottom of that is data. Sadly, most places, a lot of that data generation and gathering is done by people when it could be done by IoT technologies, which not only is that human capital and the repetitive, uh, no offense, but humans are notoriously not that reliable <laughs> and about doing things repetitive every day, you know, on time, that kind of thing, not near as reliable as IoT device. So that data generation, by taking that off of people and putting something that you can get better results, more results, and having that good foundation of data. The people that were generating that data before, gathering that data, can sit at that information and that knowledge layer, you know, help better understand their process, not just go gather information about the process. No, actually have all of the information already there and focus on getting to meaningful insights instead of just getting it. Okay, so help me understand this. So basically, you're in this scenario, you potentially are elevating people, right? From the data gathering to the information knowledge transfer or understanding of what the data is telling us. Is that correct? Yeah. And you talked about inefficiencies. Honestly, every plant you go into, there's usually a process engineer that knows his process down to a T, and he knows everything that would need to be done if we could get all the information to even start making that decision. So a lot of his, his time ends up being getting that information and he can spot things ahead of time, right? He always knows, you know, the third press goes down and this is what kind of precludes it, but he's constantly having to go check that one thing to make sure that it's all within its parameters. Well, that process engineer, if he, if we were actually using him efficiently, then he could sit at, oh, here's all my data. Oh, of, of course that's going to go down, you know? And he wouldn't have to spend all that time trying to go and get it. And he wouldn't have to spend time doing something that, honestly, someone else could do. His knowledge is more important being back there and being given the data. Right. In that, though, Amos, there, there was a big if there. If he can get the data, 
which leads me to a, you know, a question around communication and networks, processes, what needs to be in place so that he can get that data and they can move that information to make those decisions? Well, I think that can be a huge business shift for a lot of different companies. But to really embrace what IoT really means or even try to understand it or try to use it, that can be a huge shift. But I think obviously you've got to look at your your business culture and what you're actually looking at doing with it. You're never going to get anything through if everybody thinks it's just the new kid on the block trying to do something and yeah, well, those, those new technologies always fail. If, if that's the mentality, it's going to be really hard to start to deploy some of these. But I feel like we're going to have to, if nothing else, because the business cases justify it to get some of that data and start getting good information. But that all being said, definitely business culture. If you're already on board, how do you really go about this? I think security is something that a lot of times gets overlooked. And IT and OT are notoriously not always happy working with each other, but that information that you're generating on the OT side really needs to interact with a lot of the newer IT technologies and communication paths. And I think, you know, security is one of those ones that is only going to become more and more talked about and important. And so getting a good, security plan in place and working with IT to kind of manage that, OT can use a lot of IT's communication paths and and lean on them to establish good ways to start to get this information. Right. Just businesses allowing the OT to spend that time gathering data, think more, make better decisions, all these things that are so important. And so if, if I'm in a plant right now, Amos, and I want to make some of these changes. How do I know if I'm ready for this? Find a use case. There's so many different ways to justify an I, IoT you know, project, but it doesn't have to be a major business shift. With the price point that you're looking at, minor process improvements or even just better data that you really want to look into. Maybe you want to do a deep study on quality on a certain part. You know, Even just getting that, one little IoT device that can go gather all that information and you can get everything that you need. Find that use case and you can start down the road. I would say unless you can get a lot of people, a lot of different departments in place to really dive into it and really want to start going after this, it's tough. And even if you get everybody's sign off, it's tough to do it right. You really need to go through that the learning lessons of what it means to deploy this kind of stuff and set up the infrastructure to really start, you know, doing different things. Now, you know, setting up the infrastructure and doing a lot of the bigger picture, right? The end goal, you don't have to do right away, but you do have to have justification by the business to actually go after it. So find little use cases for one little thing, get a prototype out there, start getting the data. And I think that's one of the biggest things is really look at IoT because because a lot of things, they do require a lot of data or a long history of trends of good information to really start making your process better. So find a use case, start going after it, start prototyping, start doing small things. You might not get complete buy-in, but you'll get a lot more buy-in when you just save the, the company $100,000 a year. Right. Kind of what I'm hearing too and making the connection is, you know, don't boil the ocean. It goes back to that old story, you know, how to eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. So start (laughs) small, you know, find an area that you can make an impact, but it needs to be an area that you can make a measurable impact in from what I'm hearing you measure Mm -hmm. that because then you can start building some cheerleaders around you and get that team in. Because usually once some of these technologies, you can see the impact. It's a lot easier to do Project two, three, four, five, it's sometimes the hardest thing to get off the ground is project one because you got to prove yourself, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be the biggest project. Sometimes it's literally just seeing if a cold room is staying cold. And, you know, like it can be something small, but uh, you hit on a good point. You know, how do you know if you're IoT ready? 
if you've got cheerleaders already in there and they've already done it and they're excited about it and they know what it can do, you have people throughout your organization that are ready to start going after it, you know that you'll be able to find a use case. Exactly. Well, I mean, this has been great, Amos. I mean, this has really been a good breakdown of industrial IoT for our listeners. And we love to wrap the, the Eco SY up with the Y. I'm anxious to hear your take on this because you have such an experience in manufacturing. You're out with end users all the time. Somebody would sit you down in a room and say, you know, give me the purpose. Talk to me about what, why this is important. So why would be embracing the industrial IoT be important for the future of manufacturing? Efficiency. We look at a lot of our plants and our processes, and we try to make them more efficient. Well, we probably have already got all of our low-hanging fruit, and we already figured out how to, which data we needed to gather to go after what we, we knew about. But you don't know what you don't know until you start getting better data and more data, and you can start elevating to people where they start making decisions and already have the data to start making those decisions. It's only then we, we really start to unlock the true impact and our efficiency in manufacturing. No doubt. And it's exciting to see where it's going in the future, isn't it, my friend? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty fun to be in it. And that's what we're trying to inspire people to come to it. So, I mean, Amos, this has been wonderful. Good overview of industrial IoT, a fundamental discussion here. But I think we went pretty deep in some areas and and hopefully connected some dots for some listeners. So, man, thank you so much for taking the time and the knowledge and the insight that you provided today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by an electrical equipment company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.